It's raining once again in India. I live in Bangalore. It's flooding outside. Chennai is flooded right now. Tamil Nadu and Puducherry is underwater. And the monsoon is here. It began raining immediately at the onset of the monsoon. And this is the second season of the year of monsoon in India. So currently it is inundated in South India, but not really in Rajasthan. Why so? That's what we're looking at today. We're going to look at the major monsoon patterns in India and why the wind flows the way it does. Let's get right into it. Whenever we say the word monsoon, we have particular associations with it, right? We think of wet, hilly grasslands, we think of dew, we also think of flooded cities, we think of incessant rains, we think of apartments in Mumbai underwater, we think of Cherapunji. And incidentally, the word itself came to describe precisely all of these things that we think of. The word monsoon was first used to describe Indian seasonal rains. It originates from the Portuguese and Dutch corruptions of the word mausam, which was used in Arabic and Hindustani in the Indian subcontinent in the 1500s and 1600s when the Portuguese and Dutch came around. Mausam means season and the word season is the key here. We have two distinct monsoon seasons in India. But what is a monsoon in the first place? How is it different from just regular thunderstorms? Well, a monsoon is when there is large-scale reversal in the direction of wind, which then results in changes in rain and precipitation, and these changes occur seasonally. India has primarily subtropical conditions in the northern parts and tropical climate in the south. The whole country is considered to have tropical climate overall. But what actually ends up happening is that it's slightly warmer in the south at all times. And this is because of Himalayas in the north and the coastlines in the south. Cold winds from the Himalayas keep the entire region cool in the north at all times. Whereas in the south, winds blow over the land from both coasts. As a result, the climate in the southern parts of India is always typically warmer than the northern parts. And this influences monsoon. India has two main monsoon seasons like we just said and they are referred to by various names. There's the summer monsoon and the winter monsoon. There's the post-summer monsoon, the pre-winter monsoon. There's the summer monsoon and the retreating monsoon. And then of course there are the technical names, the southwest monsoon and the northeast monsoon. In the summer, between the months of March to May, the land of Asia begins to heat up the continental mass. This leads to low pressure regions building up over land. So in the summer months, the continental Asia becomes very, very warm. Central and Southern Asian region over land heats up and thus creates low pressure regions. What this leads to is it causes the air above the land in China, Mongolia, Pakistan, even like Thar desert, to warm and rise up and cold air then rushes to fill in this gap. And where does the cold air come in? It comes in from the ocean. It comes from the Indian Ocean towards the landmass of Asia. So it's coming from the southwest direction because of the shape of the Asian landmass. And of course, the winds go all over the place. But the southwest trade winds are basically what enter the Indian subcontinent. These enter in two branches. The main larger branch is the Arabian Sea branch that enters in through Kerala. And it is much stronger than the Bay of Bengal branch of winds. So these moisture-laden winds, they are carrying water from the ocean. They rush in over the Asian landmass, over the Indian landmass, and they start dropping water on their way. As they encounter various landforms and various variations in temperature, precipitation occurs and monsoon occurs, and then there is rain happening when these winds rush in. As these winds move northward, they encounter the Himalayas. The Himalayas act as a barrier and they end up trapping these winds, these monsoon winds full of moisture around the Himalayan region in the north. So the winds then end up circulating right here and they dump all of their water here, which is what leads to these intense rains in the north from June to September. 
This monsoon typically first hits the Andaman and Nicobar Islands sometime towards the end of May. The entire country gets drenched during the southwest monsoons and the northeastern states get their maximum rainfall in this season of monsoons. The next season is the winter season or the pre-winter season and the process gets reversed. Low pressure area builds up over the Indian Ocean and cold wind from the Himalayas rushes out towards the southern regions towards the Indian Ocean to fill up the gap left by all the warming air that's evaporating above the sea. The winds are actually cold and dry when they originate in the Himalayas, but they pick up moisture on the way down and they dump all of this when they exit the landmass, mainly over the southern states. There is a pattern here though, most of the rainfall occurs on the eastern coastal states, that is, you know, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Orissa, even uh, West Bengal and uh, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, this region because the wind is also blocked by the western ghats and the western ghats intercept a lot of these monsoon winds and rains end up falling on this side of the Indian coastline more. Now this season is technically also considered the post-monsoon season or the retreating monsoon because as the name suggests the winds are retreating from the country. This season lasts from October to December, sometimes stretching all the way to January before the actual winter over the Indian subcontinent sets in and temperatures drop. But why does this even happen? Why does the heat shift southward to trigger the northeast monsoon and why does it move upward the low pressure regions to trigger the southwest monsoon? Well, seasons. For the Northern Hemisphere, summer is when the North Pole is facing the Sun and during winter, the South Pole faces the Sun. So the Sun moves southward during winter. Thus, South India becomes warmer than the North as the Sun moves south in the sky and it starts drawing wind from the Himalayas towards the Indian Ocean this time of the year. Currently, as we know, the Northern Hemisphere is getting cooler seasonally and Australia is getting warmer. So currently, we're in the northeast monsoon season, which has of course promptly inundated Tamil Nadu and Puducherry and also raining here in Karnataka a little bit. We know very well that of course these monsoons are affected by anthropogenic climate change. So far, northeast monsoon seems to be less affected than the southwest monsoon looking at historic data. However, other effects of warming will of course play out more during these monsoon seasons. For example, due to the oceans being warmer during the northeast monsoon season, this season, the months between October and December, experience seasonally very high number of hurricanes. So, as the rain intensity increases overall with warming atmospheric conditions, more extreme events are also likelier to take place over the longer term.